Before I start, I just wanted to announce that I'm going to try doing a Tuesday upload schedule. I want to try not to eat into my weekends and rebalance the uh, bulk of my work week. But yeah, check out videos on Tuesdays. Hello and welcome to another episode on the Robin Sealark channel. <laughs> Today we are going to do a video patterned after a video I did a year ago, painting anything that inspires me on Pinterest. But today we're going to work with a little app I like to call Instagram. Basically, uh, this video series or video format is a great excuse for me to just dive through nice visual imagery that I want to binge anyway and make artwork that I feel uh, impressed to, whether it's going to allow me to do something I don't usually do or to... or to give me inspiration for practice or skill development. Try this at home if you so uh, desire, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Oh, also, watch last week's video. It was really good. I think you'll like it. Okay, enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to the voiceover. So on my Instagram page, I like to, as I scroll through my different art profiles, save them. I don't have it super organized, but this is where I keep all of my visual inspiration pieces that I find that I'm interested in or like, for whatever reason, go in here. So today I thought I would start by looking at the artwork of Heather Day. She is an incredible abstract artist on Instagram that I found this year. I really enjoy the texture, color, line work. You're gonna see a lot of influence from her as she is uh, the inspo for this first project. I thought that she would be a good place to start because I'm very fascinated by her gestural work, the confidence of her lines, the beauty of the colors, and you know, Heather Day, you just, you go girl. So uh, thank you for the inspo and I'm gonna do a number of studies based on her work, just trying to kind of channel some of the same ideas and get myself experienced or loose. Uh, these are some cold press watercolor papers that I've cut up and I thought that they would be good to have for studies, something a little bit more sturdy and also that I thought would work well with watercolor. I'm not entirely sure how she does her methodology. It looks like something akin to watercolor that she uses on her canvases though and you can see the kind of bleeding or almost dye-like nature of the pigments which I found to be a really nice quality in her work so that's where we're starting. This is going to be very mixed media and I'm going to be doing six short studies based on her pieces. My roommate cat named Jack just came over, so there may be meows. I wanted to do layers with a number of things and kind of work it up and see what would happen as I built up that keyword. You guys know I love to say visual history, but then working to accentuate different lines and organic features that came through. And I really wanted to work very confidently and to placed down lines in a way that echoed the kind of sense and gestural quality that she's able to capture. So this is our fifth and sixth pieces. I didn't quite catch the filming on that first stage of those ones, but now I'm going to go back in and process all of these again. So this, sometimes I'll put pieces more in order so you can see the full start to end of the process, but these ones I broke up and just went along with the way I processed it because it was a very different process than how I normally do my works and I was jumping in between these working very quickly waiting for different layers to dry. I ended up going into these with watercolor acrylic new pastel which is a hard chalky pastel and colored pencils. I used Prismacolor because they're just so pigmented and it was really beautiful to work on top. In between some of my layers I would use hairspray as a fixative to adhere the new pastel and make sure that I didn't have loose powder drifting about and in the very end I also used a glossy varnish to give the whole thing a covering. So they have a very sealed surface to them even though they are in so many 
different mediums. Now this black line is something I saw very similar to something Heather Day had done. This and other things reminded me a lot of the work actually of Basquiat. I was watching a documentary about him on Hulu and I felt channeled by some of his uh, gestural lines, some of his bold, confident mark making, and those bright colors. He was very influenced by the graffiti movement. He was around and relevant at the time of Andy Warhol, and he was going to the clubs in New York and thinking about the street and moving art forward and had this kind of confidence and alternative way of working and thinking that uh, I think came through a little bit as I was working in these pieces. Something nice to meditate on. He's a cool artist. This one I processed too much and I ended up ripping in the paper and I decided to creatively problem solve by layering acrylic on to reinforce the paper, make it thick, and then sealing it at the end with that varnish so that it ended up having a really nice surface texture still. These are all of the pieces. You can see they're all quite different, but I thought they paired really nicely together. They have a very free quality that's very movement-based and fun, and I think doing things like this is an important practice. Next, I saw this trending on my homepage, my art research page, and I really liked the colors that she used. There's an obvious, bold, pigmented, contrasted, idyllic beauty to these, and I wanted to go for a similar vibe, so well, thanks for your inspo. I went to Pexels for a reference image so I could find something with similar color themes and found this photographer who was putting up reference images, so shout out to her. You can find her at adventures underscore of Jess on Instagram. I did this in three stages. This is different than something I've ever actually done. I wanted to use the new pastels again, and even more quickly than I can with acrylic, I decided to lay down colors to block in my general shapes. So I didn't do any initial drawing on this one, but uh, I did, I suppose, with the new pastels. And it was kind of nice because I just really like in that initial stage to get something down so that I can have the mental map to work on top of. After I finished the new pastel, I sprayed it with hairspray and then after that was dry, I went on with acrylics. So this is the acrylic painting stage and I am going to process it a third time with oil paints on the very top. The acrylics got the colors much more vibrant and a really established form and when I went in with oils, it was more for finalizing my color choices, lightening the sky, adding details, vibrancy, doing some glazing so that I could bring new color hues onto the water surface and glow into the sky, emphasize the brightness of the sun behind the mountain and cloud and give the water some shining effects. The last thing I wanted to do was very water-based. I had a bunch of artwork up on my desktop while I was working. The first person who got me really stoked to work on painting waves was Renato Muccilio, Fine Arts. He's someone I've been following for a while and everything he does is absolutely creamy, dreamy, and incredible, but his green waves especially were getting me pretty pumped on checking out the water. I used to make a lot of water paintings. I don't do it as often now, but I like to turn to some of my painting inspiration <laughs> gurus online so that I can get a better idea of what I'm trying to make, how I can capture luminosity and contrast movement. This painting was actually one that I was tagged in, I believe, and I was just really impressed by the colors and the textures, so that got me really stoked as well on painting waves. I worked from one of my own references on this, and I did have some struggles. For one, moving to a slightly larger scale than I've been working in more recently. This is just an 11 by 14 inch uh, painting and sometimes you know when I'm getting back in the flow and groove of things with subject matter it's easier for me to work on a smaller scale sometimes just in general I like the way my work comes out on a small scale so I needed to turn for some help to try to improve the quality of this painting I was working on and I checked out the work of an artist I follow regularly Catherine Burns art and looking at some of her process shots online helped me to conceptualize things that I was kind of doing wrong I think I didn't get my underpainting developed quite well enough so that I could be working on top of a base background color 
with my then white details in order to really establish curvature and contrast in that wave. But I did continue into this and I increased some of that contrast and I tried to recreate some of the effects I wish I had put in earlier in the painting but in later stages now and ultimately just kept working up the surface and the details, destroying things where I had to, adding things, and making it work. <laughs> If you've been out of practice with a subject matter that you used to know really well, I would encourage you not to be too hard on yourself because it is a process and sometimes we give our attention to different things and it can eat into where our footing is with our skill development. We can definitely work to redevelop those things, but in those times, look to the people who inspire you, look for teachers and reinvest yourself. Thank you all for watching. If you're not already, I hope you'll subscribe, follow my social media accounts for content in between, and you can support me on Patreon or by my or by or by or by buying a painting that you saw in this video or a different one that exists on my website at robinclark.com. Okay, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, and uh, bye. <laughs>